first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your musical background? Um, well, uh, I've played guitar for about 30 odd years. Uh, so I've always been really interested in music uh, since uh, really from, 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 you know, from at the age of, well, as far as I can remember really. Um, and uh, I've always been interested in composing music. Um, over the last um, 10 to 15 years, I've, I've put out uh, around that number of albums, around 14 or 15 CDs. Uh, and I work on different musical projects, so sometimes it's music for solo guitar and other times it's um, perhaps work with, with various different ensembles or for guitar duet, guitar and cello, songs, instrumental pieces. A lot of my music is uh, instrumental music um, and uh, mainly I'm a classical guitarist uh, who writes music, that's how I see myself, but I also um, in, in the context of a studio, sometimes I'll play other instruments like keyboards or put vocals on or play bass guitar and that sort of thing. Um, your latest album, Tabula Rasa Sweet. Yeah. Tell us your reasoning behind that actual title yeah. name. Um, well, um, the, the, yeah, the, new, the new piece of work is uh, um, the main part of that album, Tabula Rasa Sweet, is the piece Tabula Rasa Sweet, which is uh, a nine movement uh, series of uh, shortish pieces about ha half an hour of music, um, pieces for uh, solo guitar, and it's a quite meditative um, series of music. Um, tabula rasa means clean slate, which means uh, it's, all, it's really all about, uh, or the music is about um, the idea of how the world has come out of nothing in a way, uh, and the sort of mystery of that, and how a musical idea can come just from nowhere. Um, so the pieces started out as literally uh, improvisations, hence the cl clean slate sort of concept. But then uh, the pieces are presented with um, uh, an environmental soundscape which runs through them, uh, the sounds of a park. So you get this creation story played out in the sounds of, of a suburban park, which is recorded in Sefton Park, Liverpool. Um, so it starts off with the sounds of um, uh, rain and then wind and then you have the birds in the trees and then children so it's almost like how you know sudden you know animals appear and then human beings appear and it's all within this context of half an hour so uh, that's the main uh, part of this CD uh, and then the other part of the of the CD is um, my um, performance of uh, uh, Satie's uh, Trois Gymnopodies which is um, a, a very famous piece written in the late 1880s by French composer Eric Satie. Um, it was uh, a piece composed for piano, but it's been transcribed for uh, solo classical guitar. So that seemed to pair quite nicely with this other meditative piece.
Okay, Kate, this is the first time in England. Tell us about your background and tell us about yourself and music. I grew up uh, in a town in Texas called Sugar Land and I just grew up listening to country music. It's what um, my parents and my family, what we always listen to and it's what I knew I wanted to do. And I moved to Nashville about seven years ago uh, to pursue it and I've been going after country music ever since. And for those that are unaware of your musical style, can you just explain a little bit more about what you actually do? Ooh, it is a really good blend. It's hard to describe. I write almost all of the music and so I'm very eclectic and I listen to a little bit of everything. So if you like country, you'll get some songs that are more traditional, some that are more of the pop rock influence. Uh, I would say it's a, it's a really good blend of country, a little bit of something for everybody. So what do you make of the actual mix of country and something that's uh, incorporating something like dance music now because it's used a lot now in the modern day. It is, yeah, we were just talking about this. Uh, it's, it's really fun because country now is definitely incorporating all of the different styles and uh, I think it's really cool. I think it's, it's definitely more modern, but it's fun. Well, it's the first time in the UK, how are you finding it? I love it, I absolutely love it. Uh, we're talking now about coming, when we can come back. <laughs> What do you make of Liverpool itself? Because obviously it's been the first time in Liverpool as well. It is. I haven't really had a chance to walk around really and explore, but it looks like a really neat town. I went and I got a coffee right before coming here, and there are lots of neat vintage shops. And yeah, excited to go explore, hopefully later. And you mentioned you recorded at Abbey Road last Friday. How was that? It was amazing. We recorded two songs one that we wrote in Nashville and actually one that we wrote the night before on the bus and we loved it so much that we just were like, well, we'll record it here. <laughs> and are you, are you a fan of the Beatles? Yes, yes, I am. And I, it was amazing being there because I wasn't aware of the fact that most of the, the stuff that they record at the studio is actually soundtrack music and so they've recorded like the Lord of the Rings soundtrack, Star Wars, they're all laughing, it's such, I'm such a geek, I love that stuff. <laughs> Moving on to your music, your fourth album <clears throat> Falling To Me, which I have now yes. on, in my hands, it's the highest charted album for yourself and it's also the first top 10 country album for yourself, so do you, do you like that recognition? Oh, I think it's. I think anything that gets the music out there is is great, and uh, we had a lot of support with this album, which was very nice. And yeah, I'm very appreciative of it. And the, the actual album itself was produced by Grammy Award winning Chad Carlson. How was it like working with him? Uh, I love Chad. I worked with him on the previous record as well, and he actually this was the first album that he produced in its entirety, and. He's just a really good friend, a really great collaborator, and I'm glad that I get the chance to work with him. And each of the songs on the actual album, is, it tells a story in its own self, its own, its own right. So where do you get your, the influence in songwriting? <laughs> a little bit of everything. It, whether it's my personal life or one of my friends or family members, they all, like you said, have some sort of story. <laughs> I don't always say exactly what the story is because I, sometimes I don't want the people to necessarily know, but there is always a direct story, yes. So do you mind actually talking about your personal details, about your personal self in your lyrics? Are you open to that? Most of the time. Sometimes I try to broaden it a bit just because if you make it so personal then it can be hard for people to relate I think but if you take that feeling that emotion that you felt in the moment and you write about that that's what people can relate to because everybody's been in that place before. Talk about influences in songwriting do you have any actual influences that got you into the music scene itself? Yeah I grew up listening to a lot of strong female vocalists. That's kind of what I, and I still gravitate towards that. Patsy Cline, uh, Martina McBride, gosh, Dolly, Reba, Faith, all of those just, like I said, powerful females and I loved their lyrics and their vocals and just the message that they gave off. So what's next for yourself? You're bringing out more singles, another album, what's next? Yeah, 
Yeah, well, we're just actually releasing, uh, we just released a single here and it's called Better in a Black Dress. And when I go back to the States this next month, I'm going to start working on uh, the new album. And you'll be playing uh, a live session just after this interview right now. So what will you be playing? I will be playing Better in a Black Dress and then uh, two, one track off of this album and a track off of the previous album. So. Katie, thank you very much for coming in today. The album is obviously out now, yes. so go and buy it. Yeah, you can go iTunes, my website, um, lots of options. Katie, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Katie Armager and this is Better in a Black Dress. Three, four. I left the keys, I hit the road I didn't want to but I had to let you go To know a good thing went so bad Whoa. Whoa. And I really do hate that you hate me And I really do hate that you hate me I don't need a white veil I got a black dress Don't need a preacher No, no, not yet Don't have the blues When I've got my red and white Black dress. I'm just a girl, I'm not a wife. I just need a little time to live my life. Whoa, whoa. I want to dance, I want to yell. I'm on a I'm better in a black dress, call it a hot mess. I feel so good, ooh, I gotta confess. I like the way it feels in cowboy boots and heels. So listen up, baby, it's a deal. Don't need a white veil, I got a black dress. Don't need a preacher, no, no, not yet. Don't have the blues when I've got my red and white. This is safe and it's dedicated to our firemen and first responders. I wasn't looking for love. It didn't really fit inside my world, but one look in your eyes. And I completely changed my mind mm, I was 
Jump the gun. 